Well, hello, everyone. I got an update recently on a case that we had looked at. Oh, it's been quite a while. So I thought, here's what I'm going to do. Because there was so much backstory involved in it. Before I read this new article to you, I'm going to play you the video that I did way back when. Now, when I upload this, I'll add chapters. So if you've seen the video before, you can just fast forward to the update, okay? So let's get to it. See Dick. See Dick still from the elderly. See Dick run. Run, Dick, run. Marietta attorney who's been on the run since February has finally been caught. That's right. Richard Merritt is accused of killing his own mother before running from police earlier this year. Marshals tell me they later found out he lived at an apartment with a woman unfamiliar with his criminal background. Marshals also learned Merritt frequented a local restaurant. Yesterday, they staked out the restaurant. They say Merritt walked past them and went into a thrift store. Inside the store, they arrested Merritt, ending a nationwide search. See Dick testify. In 2018, I was arrested in Cobb County for multiple counts of theft, forgery, and uh, there were some counts also of elder exportation because I did steal money from some elderly folks. Uh, several months earlier, I had voluntarily surrendered my bar license. Welcome to Dimwit Criminals. Richard Merritt, who I warmly refer to as Douchebag Dick, is a disbarred attorney and father of two children who was recently on trial in Georgia for the brutal unaliving of his own mother. I mean, look at this pic, ladies. Is he a catch or what? Shirley Merritt was 77 years old, and she was the only person left in Dick's life who put up with his BS. So Dick was an attorney. He specialized in, well, I'm just going to let his ex-wife explain it. Um, he became an attorney quite some time after he graduated. Um, it took him three times to pass the bar. Okay. He worked for many firms. He practiced many different kinds of law okay. over the years. He had a lot of different jobs at a lot of different firms doing different things. He had his own private practice prior, prior to losing his license. Now, Dick's trouble started well before all of this, when he decided he was going to defraud more than half a million dollars out of 17 of his elderly clients. It was about five years ago when he was charged with 43 counts of fraud. Dick was settling malpractice lawsuits, and then he was pocketing the settlement money for himself without even notifying his clients. So we learned about his history while he was on the stand in his trial, and he went on and on about his picture-perfect family life. Since I started my practice in 2010, but it was right on a little village square. There. That was part of why I picked that area, because I saw a need. I wanted to be the local lawyer that people went to first for help. And it was a very successful... Actually, the first time I got arrested in connection with the Cobb County fraud was in April of 2017. It was shortly after spring break that year. We had just gotten back and I had two of the older ladies who were victims in the main arrest uh, in January of 2018. They had taken out a warrant for one th account of theft by conversion, alleging I'd stolen $70,000 70, tomorrow morning at, at that time, to uh, uh, Funds were jail. extremely tight and limited. Um, I was in the Cobb County Jail, Janine was scrambling to try to make sense of what was going on and take care of the children. So my mother graciously offered to assist with his initial fee payment. In fact, he kept going on and on so much that the prosecutor and the judge kept having to reel it all in. And, and Mr. Queen, this has turned into a lot of narrative. So you need to either ask some specific questions or instruct your client to confine his answers to the questions that are asked. So when Dick was charged with these offenses, his wife said, uh-uh, I'm not having it. I served him divorce papers five days after he was arrested. And I divorced my ex-husband when I found out about his double life and his crimes and what he had done to all those people and what he had done to us. He didn't pay our mortgage for six months, so we lost our home. At the time of his arrest, January of 2018, 
we lost our electricity because he hadn't paid the bill. I had a van that I used to transport my daughter and, my, and her wheelchair, and he pawned the van. So who comes to the rescue? Mama. Mama, who is the only person that has always been there for Dick, pulling him out of all of his problems, financially, apparently criminally. She even takes a second mortgage out on her home and bails his useless butt out of jail. So he pleads guilty to forgery and elderly exploitation in January of 2019. He was sentenced to 30 years with the assumption that he was going to serve 15 of that, right? But the judge gives him two weeks to get his affairs in order before he reports to jail. Have these judges not learned from the past? You give these criminals an inch and they're going to take a mile. So back to his more recent trial. Dick sat on the stand and he described what happened to his mother with zero emotion. According to Dick, on February 1st of 2019, Mom was cooking Dick's favorite meal because it was the last night before he had to go to prison and start serving his sentence for 15 years. Dick says, these two random guys knock on his mother's front door. He answers it and he lets them in because they're holding pistols to him. They told him and his mother to get in the basement. Now, how these two mystery men who he'd never seen before and his mother had never seen before somehow knew <laughs> that they had a basement it was very interesting, right? Well, there's, that's just the first crime dick story. They said, head to the basement and don't say an effing word. She opened the stair door to the basement, clicked on the light. It was a two, two step process to get down those stairs. You had four or five steps that went down, there's a landing. And then you make the turn and there's the longer flight of stairs. They proceeded first. My mother was crying. She was making sounds like she might be wanting to scream or shout. He told her to shut the F up and pushed her down the stairs. It was the worst sound I've ever heard in my life. Um, she plunged headlong into the wall a, it's a sound I can hear to this day as I'm sitting here. And I could tell that there was a dent or a hole in the wall. She was trying to get up and move around, but from my vantage point, she appeared like she couldn't get her balance. The gentleman who pushed her down the stairs, put his pistol behind his back into the, the back part of his jeans. He ran down the stairs, turned the corner, and came back with the 35 pounds weight that has been seen during the course of this trial. And where did the knife come from? Well, <laughs> the knife came later. Um, this monster took this dumbbell and proceeded to bludgeon my mother right in front of me. And she was, she stopped moving at this point. And then the older guy took off up the stairs. He came back a few minutes later with the kitchen knife and proceeded to stab my mother repeatedly in front of me. I, I cannot believe what I was seeing. I didn't understand what would be the purpose because she wasn't moving. What, why is any of this happening? It was a complete and utter nightmare. Oh, and Dick, during all this, just stood there and watched and didn't do a damn thing. And there's nothing I could do. I had a, a pistol to my back. I couldn't believe this was happening. I had no clue who these people were or why they were doing this to us. So he stabbed her with such force that the handle broke off the knife. I didn't realize at the time that the knife was still stuck in my poor mother's face. Now, instead of calling the police, douchebag Dick cuts off his ankle monitor and flees to Nashville in his mother's car. So I know what you're wondering. Why? We all wonder why. 
Well, here's his explanation. He put the handle down on the tile across from the dumbbell. He then turned and looked at me and he pulled out his cell phone and he proceeded to show me a picture of my ex-wife dropping Mia off at her school, a picture of Jack being dropped off or picked up at Lovett, a picture of them all getting out of her van at their rental home in Marietta, and a picture of her either coming or going from her clinic in Vinings. And he said, and I'll never forget this as long as I live, if you say a single word, they're next. And then they left. No, I did not call police. These guys had left. I went and got a small backpack out of my room. I put a few, few clothes. I didn't pack much. Some basic toiletries. And I left. I took my mother's car because it had more gas in it than my car. It had a bigger tank. And I had no idea where I was going or where I was going to end up. And the funny thing about all that is that brilliant Dick was caught on surveillance video at the local gas station getting gas before he left town. So douchebag Dick gets to Nashville. I don't know why he chose Nashville. Apparently he ran out of gas. Who knows? He changes his name to Mick Malvo and gets a job at a bar there. He then starts setting up profiles on online dating sites. I bet he used this picture, ladies. I bet he used it. Y'all know he used that picture. Ooh. So some poor woman actually found it attractive and started speaking with him. Eventually, not long at all, actually, she allows him to shack up with her. Because let's face it, Dick didn't have anything. He was probably living out of his dang car. He tells this woman that he was in marketing. However, he's working at a bar, so go figure. He has no kids with his ex-wife, and both of his parents were no longer alive for natural causes. Best part of the story, right here. U.S. Marshals catch up with Dick eight months later. And he's caught because somebody broke into his vehicle. And the vehicle ends up getting towed. Yep. Same car. Still registered under his mom's name. But there's no need to worry, people. Because this fool is no longer running loose anymore. He just recently went on trial. It took the jury only 90 minutes to return with a verdict. As of count one, malice murder, we the jury find the defendant guilty. As of count two, felony murder, <clears throat> we the jury find the defendant guilty. As of count three, felony murder, we, the jury, find a defendant guilty. As of count four, aggravated assault, we, the jury, find the defendant guilty. <clears throat> As of count five, aggravated assault, we, the jury, find the defendant guilty. As of count six, possession of knife during commission of a felony. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty. This 24th day of May, 2023. Shirley Merritt was an absolutely wonderful person. She was a joy to be around. She was a very giving and loving person. And a great person was murdered by her own son. All this started almost five or six years ago now, when Richard was first arrested for stealing from clients, mostly elderly clients. And he showed then he had no compunction about doing anything. When it came time for him to go to prison, 
he couldn't stand the idea of somebody with an ego as big as his being uh, being sent to prison and the court has convicted him of murdering his mother, cutting off his ankle bracelet, running to Nashville, getting on a website and dating a woman and living with her under a complete and utter pretext. His whole life has been a pretext. And I just want the court to know what an evil person he is in the eyes of his family. Mr. Mayor, as to count one malice murder, I do sentence you to life without the possibility of parole. Counts two and three will be vacated as a matter of law. Counts four and five will merge with count one. As to count six, possession of a knife during the commission of a felony, I do sentence you to five years to serve consecutive to the sentence in count one for a total sentence of life without parole plus five years. So there you have it. Justice is served and douchebag Dick will probably end up using his manipulation on fellow inmates to help them with their legal issues. But this time around, it's only going to be for hostess snack cakes at the commissary. All right. So douchebag Dick, <laughs> apparently his own brother is now speaking out. I was so hoping that we would get an update on this because I just felt like there's his poor mother. Um, I was I was really hoping that we would get an update on this because I felt like there was just some there was a piece missing in this story. Like I wanted to hear from somebody else in the family. And now finally his brother has spoken out. So here's what we are going to let me just read this whole article to you guys. What seemed like the perfect family was torn apart after a man whose own brother called him a master manipulator, killed their mother, and then went on the run. For part of his childhood, Richard Merritt lived in luxury in Saudi Arabia with his parents, Shirley and Robert Sr., after Robert Sr. retired from the military and began a much more lucrative career with a defense contractor. Okay, that makes sense. See, he was brought up in a posh environment. According to Robert, his brother's manipulative behavior started early and it worsened over the years. In ninth grade, Dick moved to Atlanta to live with Robert so he could continue his education. Robert notes that he was stuck at that time, acting as his brother's cook, driver, and house servant. This guy, ugh. Oof. In the early 1990s, Robert Sr. and Shirley also moved back to Georgia, and Robert Sr. retired. Years later, Richard, who went on to study law, married his college sweetheart and initially struggled to get his career off the ground. According to Robert, his brother was lazy and failed the exam several times. However, Richard passed. This must be, she must have meant to put passed here. However, Richard passed on his third attempt, allowing him to realize his dream of becoming filthy rich and a jet setter, says Robert, his brother. In November of 2000, Robert Sr. died suddenly while traveling with his wife, Shirley. The grieving widow dedicated herself to spending time with her grandchildren and rebuilding her life. Meanwhile, Richard worked for the Georgia Attorney General's office and then for several law firms. His successful career allowed him to work with Atlanta's elite, travel, and live a good life with success and all. In 2003, Richard moved his growing family to Smyrna, Georgia. There, Richard and his wife raised their son and daughter, and seven years later, he opened his own law practice. With his success, Richard seems to have created the ideal life. But in May of 2017, that veneer of perfection was shattered when he received a court summons after returning from a family vacation. According to prosecutors, the lawyer had settled a lawsuit for two sisters who were clients, but without their knowledge, he had pocketed their $70,000 settlement check. Investigators investigating Richard's practice also concluded that he may have defrauded up to 17 victims and stole over $450,000. Not only did Richard lose his license to practice law and his livelihood, his wife also filed for divorce and fought for custody of their children. Despite the criminal charges against him, Richard's devoted mother, Shirley, stood by him, bailing him out of the DeKalb County Jail and paying his legal fees. My mother begged him to let him live with her. Robert recalls of Dick's living conditions while he was awaiting trial. She wanted to protect him and help him. I think that was a big mistake. In January of 2019, Richard pleaded guilty to the fraud charges against him. He was sentenced to 15 years in prison and ordered to pay restitution to his victims. 
The judge presiding over the case gave Richard two weeks to get his affairs in order before reporting to jail about the conditions in which he wore an ankle monitor and stayed with his mother. On the day he was supposed to turn himself in to the authorities, Richard refused to turn himself in. Investigators reportedly analyzed data from his ankle monitor, which they later found in a trash can at a gas station. He was on the run. And a day later, on February 2nd of 2019, Shirley, 77 years old, was found brutally murdered in her home. It's shocking and beyond words, Robert, his brother, says, explaining that his mother was stabbed so badly that the knife handle broke and the blade stuck in her face. A bloody 35-pound dumbbell was found near the elderly victim's body. Dick, who was immediately suspected in his mother's murder, was able to elude authorities for eight months. But in September of 2019, he was in Nashville, Tennessee, living under the false name of Mick Malvo. During his time on the run, he managed to find a job and a new girlfriend. An investigation revealed that Dick owed his mother a total of around $500,000. Robert says he believes his brother manipulated and bullied Shirley for financial reasons. He did to my mother exactly what he had done to his clients. Richard was charged with his mother's murder in Georgia and pleaded not guilty in May of 2023. At the end of the trial, the jury deliberated for just an hour and a half before returning a guilty verdict. Richard Now, who is 49 years old, was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Robert says he has absolutely no pity for his younger sibling. He said, I think he deserves to be where he is. I think he can sit there and think about it for the rest of his life. He added, the absolute lack of respect and clear contempt he shown for his family, his mother, and his father's memory is unforgivable. Amen to that. And God bless poor Robert for what he's had to go through for this. It's horrible. I can't imagine. Well, I wanted to get that update out to you guys as soon as possible. And uh, be on the lookout because I do have a new case uh, coming up soon, maybe even possibly today. Y'all have a blessed day. Thank you for joining me once again, and I'll see you soon.